At this first release of MicroDDS 2010, only a limited range of intelligent objects have been released. We've looked at most of them in these previous demonstration videos. But there aren't any that cover for other major conditions, such as the, the roof, the skylights, the curtain walling, and the structural framing, the terrain, and such like that we see in this model here. And within the intelligent objects that have been implemented, there isn't a full range of options. For example, for doors, we can't at the moment use intelligent objects for revolving doors, sliding doors, folding doors, and shutters and such like. But what there is, is a class of intelligent object called user openings. And user openings can be applied to any of the standard objects that you've created to interact with the walls in a way that allows us to overcome some of the current limitations. For this first demonstration of user openings, we're going to show you how to create user opening objects from existing conventional 3D objects that you've created in MicroGDS to form openings in the intelligent walls. I've already created these objects and they're in the clipboard waiting to be used, but we need to make sure that we've got a currently set layer to work on. So let's make sure we're working on the external windows and doors layer, so we'll double click that layer. Let's also make sure that we have ownership in this multi-user project of the external walls so that the codependencies work correctly. And we can close that. And let's just use our orbit tool to adjust our view slightly. And then we can just use edit and paste to drop those objects into place. Just quickly look at the, um, the two doors here in the curtain wall. The curtain wall object itself is uh, a standard micro GDS object, it isn't an intelligent object. That's not been implemented at this release and uh, we can expect to see that uh, arriving in a future update as hopefully we can expect to see things like folding doors and revolving doors. But let's concentrate on our shutter door which needs to be positioned in this intelligent wall here. So we click on the object itself and we use rename selection and we just add the first facet user opening colon. So that's now attached to the styles that apply for user opening. So we look at our properties window and we can set an object style of user opening. And you'll notice that unlike the other intelligent objects that we've been working with so far, there are no reference properties populating this um, uh, properties dialog now. What we need to do is actually work on the individual primitives. So if we select all of the primitives that form the door opening itself, let's just make sure we've got everything. This time if we look at our properties dialog, we've now got, in fact, we've picked up the window as well, so let's just screw all around to make sure, in fact we'll just switch into the plan view. Let's uh, open the plan view and just select the primitives that form the door. Switch back to our perspective view and control Q and now we'll see that we've just got a handful of um, primitive properties that we need to set. And the only one that we need to set on the graphics that make up the door itself is the representations for the primitive. And this is to tell MicroGDS what graphics to display in which of the different views that we've got. So we've got perspective, GA plan, detail plan, elevation and so on. And for perspective view you type a P. If you want it to appear in elevation you type an E. For the GA view a G and for the detail view a D. So that tells MicroGDS we want the graphics to be displayed in each of those four different view types. You obviously need to apply a little bit more care in choosing which of the right views to uh, apply and you can add primitives that are replicable to one view and not another. So for example, if you want the elevation to appear differently to the 3D representation, you could just draw something in elevation, superimpose it as, uh, over the 3D model and, and, and apply the properties. So we can close that now. Just make sure we click outside that box to uh, make sure that change is taken uh, hold. Close the properties dialog. And we now need to create another primitive as part of that object. And this is going to be what's called the cutter. The cutter is the intelligent part of this object, and this is what's going to actually form the opening. So I reset the, hook, the axes onto the uh, object itself, and we've got a Z lock on so that we're um, making sure that we're working on the zero, 0 plane. Give the rectangle command, 
and let's make sure that in the y direction the rectangle is much thicker than the wall so let's just use a value of say um, 800 millimeters that's much thicker than the wall snap on the outer corner of the um, jam and on the opposite outer corner and let's just move it I should have used the midpoints but never mind let's just move that a little way across and you then use your normal solid construction commands so solid construct extrude from the base of the opening that you want to create to the head of the opening that you want to create now these are the um, guides and the shutter in the open position that will be behind the surface of the wall so we don't want those to be included in the cutter itself now with the cutter selected we do control Q and this time we set the cutter property and we can just put any value in here at all and I, I tend to use Y for yes um, but the idea is that if there's a property set at all then the primitive is a cutter and something that's very important you need to make sure that you have some way of seeing the primitive if we left the representations blank then the cutter would be made invisible in all views and we could therefore never edit it again so we need to use an M property to make sure that we can edit that and then click outside that box to make it hold when I say you could never see it and never edit it again of course if you include the layer in a conventional window a window to which we'd not apply any styles then you'd be able to see it there and we can close that and you can see the cutters no, no longer visible but if we go into object mode and you can see that if we select it it's highlighted and as with the baseline for the walls and slabs and everything else you can see it's highlighted as yellow so the invisible primitives are highlighted in this yellow for us so we can now um, move that object into place on the wall sorry yes there we go and there we are we now have a user opening created okay let's just switch to our plan view and we'll zoom to the uh, area where we've created that object and I want to position the object accurately relative to the um, the grid here and this is just a little bit trickier because we need to set the position by let's use the box move that would work nicely for us and let's say we want to collect it from that point there and let's make it one meter from that point along that line okay go back to our 3d view perspective view and there we are okay we've positioned it precisely in the the location that we want we can now select that and we can repeat that into zoom out wheel around zoom in onto our back wall here and we need to rotate that through minus 90 degrees and repeat it onto that line there okay and let's just zoom in a little further and we'll just copy that to form the other three entrances into the building let's restore our view and that's it for simple object creating user openings. In the next video we're going to look at how we can use user openings um, not to create an opening but to actually trim the tops of our walls there for our roofs.